From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Fazan, riding shotgun as he does each and every podcast. Is Andre Johnson. Junior. Do not forget the JR at the end of the name. It's very important to remember the junior. Before we get into today's content, be sure to like, share, rate, and review. If you are watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, get the bell notification. But when we drop that fire content, and once again, thank you for finding us on the Gulf Coast Sports and Entertainment Network. We are on here quite a bit. So if you're watching us, thank you for finding us on this network. As for today, it is Friday, a beautiful day, a sunny day, a lot of Tay-Tay out there. Um, (laughs) If I'm not mistaken, is is that her nickname? Tay Tay, T Swizzle, okay. you know, you can go a lot of you ways. You know, we're talking about Tay some up. T- <laughs> that's, that's our Tay. Is, uh, t- no, the t- Taylor Swift is in town, and boy, you can feel it in the city if you're watching it right now. Uh, it is gridlocked. Some of the craziest things I've ever seen. We're not going there, though. We are yeah. talking all ball on this Friday, and we got some stuff to get into as the Saints are on the brink to a West Coast trip to face the Chargers. How are you on this Friday? I'm doing good. You know how it is. On Friday, we got high school football mm-hmm. tonight, going to the McDonough 35 game. So mm-hmm. excited to get into a little high school football. And it's a pretty big weekend. We got Pelicans tonight, too. Mm-hmm. We've got the uh, LSU coming up against Texas A&M on Saturday. And then, of course, the Saints trying to break the losing streak Sunday against the Chargers. It's so funny. All those things kind of la- like kind of line up, but we got to go black and gold. Got to gotta yep. go black and gold right now where they go Saints and Chargers. And – um, look, it's the, the Saints are on a five game losing streak. They haven't looked good. They haven't been competitive in quite some time. So that's why I wanted to go with the big picture. Absolutely. The Saints season has been a roller coaster. And I don't mean one of the ones that goes up and down and has a lot of drops. It's been one of those where you go up and you hit that big <laughs> drop and it feels like you're never going to land. No doubt about the it. The Saints sit two and five right now. But, Sean, looking at the schedule, their next five games mm. are very interesting. They go to uh, L.A. to take on the Chargers on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Week after that, they go to Carolina to take on the lowly 1-6 and six Panthers. Mm-hmm. Then they come back home to take on the, the Atlanta Falcons. Another home game against the Cleveland Browns. Maybe Jameis Winston. He's awesome. actually uh, starting, you know, starting mm-hmm. this week. Then they've got their bye, and then they take on the Los Angeles Rams. So those next five games on the schedule, very interesting, Sean. And for a 2-5 and five team that sits third in the NFC South as we sit here, How important is this stretch of games? All right, let's get into it here with the big picture. Yes, the stretch of games, the next five games over six weeks. The season, or the Saints season, is on the brink at 2-5. and We understand that. Talk to people, though, inside the building, which I have over the last couple of days, and there's still strong optimism. I'm talking really strong optimism. This week was a really good vibe week. It was probably the mini-buy uh, obviously, they're getting healthy, um, and it just it, it was a different energy this week. We'll see if that translates on Sunday. They believe the Saints do with everything that, when healthy, they are a playoff to- a playoff team, and that they still have time to make up the ground and get there. That may be true. And what else? <laughs> I mean, what else can can they be right? I mean, what, what, what where where would you want want their mindset to be right now in the, in the at the end of October? I mean, of course, you still want them to believe that they got a shot. And I'm telling you, it's not fake. It's very real. They believe they have a shot. What they don't have is much room for error. That's what they don't have. When they were unhealthy and they dug themselves so far in a hole that they really cannot afford many more losses to truly get back into contention. That's why those losses to the Falcons and the Eagles in weeks three and four now stink so bad. And we said it when it happened. Those are the losses that really hurt because at some point you're going to look back and think, man, letting those slip away could really hurt us. And it sure would be nice to steal a few back, right? But as they say... It is what it is at this point. I look at this next five-game window, and you said it, and it's the most important stretch of the season. Chargers, Panthers, Falcons, Browns, by, then Rams. You got to get three. You got to get three of those, if not four, to stay in contention, right? I mean, you have to get at least three. If you can get three out of five, you're five and seven on the other side of that. Anything below that? At four and eight and below, depending on what the other stuff does, you may have the outside mathematical thing. You could probably kiss the year goodbye at that point. At that point, it would be would that would that 
creep into December, it will be close at that point. Yeah. Can they get the first? So that's what they got to be. They got to get three out of their next five. Can they get the first one this weekend in L.A. against the Chargers? On the surface, Sunday, things look as promising as they've looked in a long time. All their key guys are back except for Eric McCoy and likely Derek Carr, who's officially listed as doubtful. And they're coming off that mini buy. The Chargers are on a short week. Plus, something gets lost. Historically, the Chargers have, are a team that have met, the Saints have matched up very well against throughout the eras. They are the exact opposite, the exact inverse of the Minnesota Vikings, a team that doesn't matter who's coaching, who's playing, has always been uh, a thorn in the Saints' side. The Saints haven't lost the Chargers since 2004. You may remember that game. That was the Aaron Brooks backwards uh, pass yeah, game back in 2004. They've won four straight since, and they won in London in 08. They won in 2012. They broke an 0-4 uh, start in 2012 against the Chargers. I believe that's right. They beat the Chargers again in 2016, and Breeze's return to the San Diego, and obviously they won in 2020 when Justin Herbert was the starter, one of his first games as a starter. The injury report was a beautiful say. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and read that, the, the injury report? Do you have that? Injury report? I remember it because yeah. for the first yeah. time in a long time, it was a short injury report. Mm -hmm. Only three players on the injury report, Derek Carr, doubtful still with the oblique. We mm -hmm. know he most likely won't play. Then Nick Saldaveri, he was out. And Jawan Johnson, who just popped up on the injury report yesterday, He's out for this week. Hmm. Only three players on the injury report outside of them. Taysom Hill, Chris Olave, Lucas Patrick, Cesar Ruiz, all the guys who have been on street clothes on the sidelines. They're going to be playing on Sunday. All right, so Olave back, Ruiz back, Pete Werner back. Pete Werner. And most importantly, Taysom Hill is hey, back. Tay. With seven available, the mad scientist, the boy wonder, the mild-mannered genius that is Clint Kubiak gets unlocked and unleashed yet again. What we've learned is simply this. Kubiak needs Taysom Hill like he needs air. Yeah. He needs Taysom Hill like he needs air. And he gets him back this week. I guarantee you, you will see the rushing numbers go up. So, you have Kubiak hopefully in a groove, calling plays. Taysom hopefully on the field making plays, the run game hopefully competent, and Chris Olave running routes downfield. It should only help one Spencer Rattler, who's likely putting the final touches of his three-game audition tape on Sunday together, and it will be his best chance for success. I hope, and it should, I hope, and, they, and I hope it gets this way from a play-calling standpoint, this takes more off of Spencer Rattler's plate and he can just execute the game plan. Look, we're high on Spencer Rattler. Y'all are high on Spencer Rattler. We, he's still a work in progress. We can all agree he's not good enough to be Superman right now. He is not good enough right now to be Superman. In saying that, so hopefully this helps the young rookie give have his best chance for success, and that would do so much for, for Rattler. I mean, just to get a win as a professional quarterback, as a starting quarterback, would do so much. So all good vibes. But in saying that, still can't pick them to win. I still cannot pick them to win. The Saints have been too disappointing defensively. They got to find their mojo, and with five straight losses, you kind of lose the benefit of the doubt, especially when you're going against a team that's coming off of a loss where they really should have won. Did you watch that game over? Yeah. Uh, they should have won that game. The ugly. Chargers really outplayed the Cardinals. Look, there's three or four fluke plays in that game. They got to be sick that they didn't get, get win that game. So, in the streak... And then I will feel comfortable picking the black and gold again. But I will say this. I do have a better feeling of going into this game than I've had going into a game the last few weeks, than I've had over the last few weeks. So I do think they're in a pretty good spot to at least they'll have the best chance to success and just be, I can't, I, I hate going this way, but be more competitive. The last three games have just been so terrible. So get back on the field and have some pride again. I think they'll have the best chance to do that. You know, looking at the next five weeks that we've mentioned, the Chargers, the Panthers, the Falcons, the Browns, bye week, and the Rams, the number that I've marked is four. I think you need to win four of those next five. You got four out of five, okay. You got. I, I want them to go four and one in that stretch, and I think four and one is re very realistic. Obviously, Sunday's win could play a huge role in that because looking past Sunday, Carolina, everybody could beat Carolina. Bryce Young is starting this week because – Former Saint Andy Dalton was involved in a car accident. Mm -hmm. He and his family are okay. However, he is not playing this Sunday. Not sure if we'll see Andy Dalton against the Saints next week, but 
Derek Carr is expected to be back for that game. So whether it's Bryce Young, Andy Dalton, with Derek Carr back, they should handle the Panthers. The Falcons, that game was close in week what, four. Yeah. In week four, that you game was back close. Home. And the Saints didn't allow a defensive touchdown. Offensive touchdown. Offensive touchdown, right. yeah. yeah. Their defense didn't allow a touchdown. Now Atlanta is coming into the Dome. I like the Saints' chances there. The Browns, now Jameis Winston walking back into the Dome. We saw uh, the Sean Payton treatment, the Will Lutz treatment that the fans gave them. Jameis Winston is not getting that treatment. No. One player that Saints fans love, whether <laughs> he's here, whether he's gone, Jameis Winston smiling and saying silly things, he will get cheered at the Dome. But the Browns have not been a very good football team. I know Nick Chubb, their running back, just came back. But I think the Saints can handle that game. Then you've got a bye coming into, in my opinion, the toughest game in that stretch, which is the Los Angeles Rams. Kyron Williams has been really good this year. They just got their two receivers back in Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. But they make a difference, don't they? Oh, they do. Yeah. And we <laughs> saw it, you know, when they played on, uh, was, was it Thursday night? Thursday night, yeah. yeah. When they played last night. So the Rams, record-wise, may not be the most impressive team in this stretch, but team and roster-wise, if they're healthy, they're going to be a problem. Now looking at Sunday against the Chargers. The Chargers, obviously a physical team. They run the ball. That's mm -hmm. been something that has plagued that Saints defense. But when you look down the line, I don't want to call them excuses per se, but a lot of the reasons why you could say the Saints haven't been winning, there's check marks in there now. Health, check. You've got Olave back. Your offensive line minus Eric McCoy is back. Derek Carr, he's not back yet, but you've got a lot more weapons for mm -hmm. Spencer Rattler, including Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who you just signed. You got his number one receiver back. Alvin Kamara just got paid. He'll be happy. You've got Kendra Miller back to at least help Alvin Kamara not have to touch the ball 29 times like he was earlier in the season. So with all of that combined, I think the Saints have to go 4-1 and one in this stretch, and that starts with a win on Sunday. I know you throw the term must win around a lot in sports. I would say Sunday is a must win game because I don't know if they go 4-1 and one without winning against the Chargers. Because I don't think they beat the Rams, if we're being honest about it. I don't think they beat the Rams. I think Carolina, Atlanta, and Cleveland are wins. The Chargers game right here, you talk about games, you look back and you say, That's man, we could have had one, right? this yeah. one. The Chargers game is one that I think you need to win. It's an interesting way to put it. Um, because, man, if they, if they could just get this one and then get Derek Carr back, a very winnable game against the Panthers. And like you said, a toss-up against the Falcons, but you get them at home and those NFC South battles, it's like you can almost – Factor in a split between the Falcons and Bucks, and then obviously the Panthers have been down. And you, if you lose that one, that would be a really, really ugly loss. Yeah. And then the Browns. You talk about a team. You know, some fans want the Saints to kind of start selling and, and and get a worse draft pick to to get you know back in the draft and, and and reset everything. Well, that's a team that's very used to doing that. That's a franchise and organization very used to doing that. Sounds like they're kind of in that that mindset again. Um, they've already traded Amari Cooper. There's rumors swirling about uh, Miles Garrett. Um, we'll see if that happens. Again, the, the trading deadline is in a couple of weeks. And you get that bye, and yes, you face a Rams team that's going to be playing better because Sean McVay is that good of a coach, but you catch him coming off that bye week. Yep, that's the time to catch him. So, man, it would be so nice if you really just flip the season on its head right here, right now, take full control of the opportunity ahead with some guys coming back and just, you know, just kind of refine that confidence again. We'll see if it happens because, I mean, you're talking about a team that just – and this is just, we kind of have enough data now that in this Allen era, it feels like they get close to knocking on, knocking on the door, maybe knocking the door down, but they always manage it. When, the second you get kind of excited about them, they stumble. I mean, it happened all last year. It happened all last year. So it would be nice to have an opportunity to kind of flip the narrative on this, but this team has not dealt with success well in years past under Dennis Allen. We'll see how they deal with failure because they've <laughs> that three game losing streak turned into four, turned into five. So clearly, they haven't dealt with a failure well either. So hopefully, this is the week they turn that around. But I'm with you. I think this is a very winnable game. I just think you're catching them at the right point. And as much as I like Justin Herbert, I just feel like he should have more success than he has. I yeah. I, I don't know if he's a if overrated is the right term. That might that might be a fair I term think it's for the right term. Yeah, I, I think that might be a fair term with him because it just feels like. He checks all the boxes, and yet the success just never follows him. 
a little bit disappointing there, even with Harbaugh. So, what are they three and three right now? Yeah, three and, three. and didn't isn't he isn't he the one who lost the twenty eight point lead in the playoffs? He to was Trevor to Trevor Lawrence. Yes, He's that's correct. Considered a top ten quarterback by most people in the it, league. Yes, and absolutely. Has he actually, done anything to be I, regarded. I think this like is that? the year that people are kind of starting to, to to jump ship on him a little bit, and rightfully so, because at some point you got to be there. I mean, yeah. you got to be there. Other players have been called overrated for far less. So, um, I think this is a very winnable game. Again, this is a historically good matchup for the Saints. They have, they've matched up well the last 20 years uh, against the L.A. or San Diego Chargers. So if you can get it done, this would be so, mm-hmm. so good uh, to, turn it, to turn that around. Because if you get the first one, and you're three and five, and like we said, either the Bucks or the Falcons are going to be four and four. So you're going to be a game behind someone in second place. And then you got the Panthers with your starting quarterback likely coming back. And then probably by the bye week, you'll have McCoy back. If you could just keep this thing afloat, then you have a little bit of optimism for the black for the for the back turn of the season um, and possibly, you know, make a run at this thing. But first things first, I mean, they gotta they gotta take care of business against the Chargers. It's not gonna be a hostile environment. I can promise you that. Uh, they spent a lot of time on the West Coast and training camp. I was there and I'll be there flying out early on Saturday morning. So that should be fun. Um, but they got to go there and get the job done. And um, like I said, I I think they have a chance to be successful. But are you picking a win? Because I cannot pick a win. I'm picking a win. Okay. I, I am picking a win because they need a win. I think that the Saints, while, while they, they won't necessarily panic outwardly, I think this organization understands that this is the game to win. You're not fully healthy, but you're as healthy if you, as you've been in a long time. If there's any game that you need to take against a team that's not that good, mm-hmm. it's this one on the road in L.A., especially when you look at the NFC South standings. The Saints have been getting gifts every week. <laughs> every year, from the like NFC, it. Right, every yeah. year, really, but from this uh, NFC South. I mean, every NFC South team lost last week. The Saints sit at 2-5, and five and it feels like the sky is falling, mm. but they're two games out of a tie for first place. Yeah. Atlanta's 4-3, and three, Tampa's 4-3. And, three. and one, Tampa of them, just, one of them are losing this week. Exactly. So. <laughs> they play each other. So one of them is for sure going to be 4-4. Four and four. Tampa just lost Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Mike yeah. Evans for at least the next several weeks. Chris Godwin's not going to play again this year. They've had health issues in their running back room, and Tampa was who I picked at the beginning of the year to win the NFC South because I felt like they were good last year and didn't get much worse, Tampa's going to take a step back because of all of those injuries. And the Saints, again, two games out of the lead, you win this week, you're right there in third place, one game behind Atlanta or Tampa. It's a very winnable division, as it has been for the last few years. And I think the wild card picture gets a little murky because there's a lot of good teams in other conferences. Like, you look at the Mm. NFC North, you've got the Vikings and (laughs) the Packers and the Lions. You look at the NFC East, the Commanders are at the top right now, but Philadelphia is right behind them. I think if you have to get into the playoffs with a wild card picture, you've got some good teams who have a pretty good head start on you right now. But winning the South, I mean, I think Tampa Bay is going to fall out of contention with all of those injuries. So it's really, if you're looking up, it's just Atlanta. And you play Atlanta in two weeks. So winning that game could have a big impact on you potentially overtaking first place gotta get that first one though yeah, got it because falling to two and six i mean it's it's gonna feel really bad if they fall to two and six and they would still have a chance in that five game stretch if they fall to two and six because like we said all these games are winnable going forward um you're gonna have to steal one but if yeah you lose this yeah weekend. it feels like yeah you'd, you'd probably have to Man, if you fall to two and six, I mean, which is certainly possible. That that's just it looks so much worse than three and five. It just looks so much worse. Do we have any questions? I know if you want to send a question, use the final word feature on the final play app, or leave a few questions in the comments section. We'll try to get to it uh, in our in next podcast. But um, I know we have a couple uh, that was sent in to us throughout the week, so we want to get a, get to a few of those. Uh, we didn't have a chance to do it on Monday or Wednesday. We had kind of got going with the <laughs> the topics at hand. So why don't you go with some of the questions? This one about a player that is near and dear to a lot of Saints fans' hearts. Mm-hmm. From Oliver, from Plaquemine, mm-hmm. after two games, do you see Spencer Rattler as the future of this organization? No, I mean, like, I don't see how you could confidently say that. I, I haven't written, taken it off the table, but you can't confidently say that. Now, I will say this, with a full slate of weapons around him in game three, he can do a nice job of, of tightening up the resume this week. He's not, like, there's, if, if Derek Carr is healthy, they're going back to Derek Carr. That that is happening. I mean, I, look, Spencer could throw for three hundred and four touchdowns. The second Derek Carr is healthy, they're going back to Derek Carr. But what I, what he can do, Spencer Rattler, is kind of leave that lasting impression um, of okay, 
I had the, this is what I did when I had most of my guys back, and this is how it looked. And if it's if it goes the way we think offensively, where they're able to run the football effectively, and he's able to just really focus on kind of play action game as opposed to the pure as opposed to just the pure pocket drop back game, where I think he's he's still not there yet. I think he can have a lot of success, or I think he can have success on Sunday. But the three game resume to me will help his cause if he finishes on a high note. But through the first two, there, no. I, I cannot say anything about the future belongs to Spencer Rattler. There was way too many mistakes that I saw uh, on the first Sunday against Tampa Bay. The first half looked pretty good, but the second half he kind of he kind of fizzled. And then really into the, the Thursday night game is uh, was, a, was, a, was a tough situation for him because he, that looked like a preseason game to me. So he, he kind of – Dropped a little bit, so he's got to swing it back a little bit in this third game uh, against the Chargers. And if he gets a fourth, we'll see. Maybe he helps himself even more. But um, the future is not now for Spencer Rattler. He'll he'll have one more opportunity, possibly two, if, if, I guess, if Carr can't go. But for the most part, this is going to be it. And um, I think he'll play better. I do think he'll play better. He's a little more rested, relaxed, refreshed, refocused. So hopefully that will help him out. When he says the future, I'm, I assume he means, like, the, the quarterback for years to come. Yeah. And – I'm going to be very frank with you and our viewers. I think the future at the quarterback position, the face of this franchise for the Saints, Say it. I think he's sitting in a college classroom somewhere. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> I don't think he's on this roster. Obviously, Derek Carr is older. I don't think he's the future face of the franchise. Uh, Jake Hayner was drafted by the previous offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael. Yep. They showed what they believed in Jake Hayner when they continuously went back to Spencer Rattler over mm-hmm. these three games. And Spencer Rattler, like you said, through two games, he's shown – some flashes. He's made a few good throws, but I think the bad has outweighed the good. And you can argue for sure that that's because of the situation that he's in. You can argue that's because of injuries. You could say he's just a rookie. He has to learn. But I'm going to remind everybody, Spencer Rattler was not picked to be the face Man, of the franchise. Said, I mean, that, that's what it boils down to. Exactly. Jaden Daniels at number two overall. He was picked to be the face of the franchise. Drake May, Caleb Williams, even Bo Nix, uh, J.J. McCarthy. They were picked First round to be the face of the franchise. Michael Penix Jr. in Atlanta. He's not playing right now, but he's play, He's sitting down behind Kirk Cousins so that he can learn in about two years. They expect him to come in and start to act as the face of the franchise, similar to what Jordan Love is doing in Green Bay. Spencer Rattler, I believe the seventh quarterback off the board yeah. all the way in the fifth round. He was the first one after the first round, guys, right? He was because yeah. there was like a three or four round yeah, uh, period yeah. where no quarterbacks were picked. So Spencer Rattler in the fifth round. The Saints didn't pick him to be the face of the franchise, to be the future of their team. If he winds up turning into that, like some, you know, late round quarterbacks did, Russell Wilson in the fourth, I believe he was in, no, Dak in the fourth, Russell Wilson was the third, Tom Brady obviously infamously in the sixth. If he turns into that, great, but that's not why he was Mm -hmm. picked. And I don't think he's shown us anything through two weeks, and I don't think he'll show us anything this week that'll say he's that guy. I think that guy is probably sitting in college somewhere, maybe in the SEC. We'll figure it out, uh, you know, when we get into April and start talking about draft. Look, and honestly, I, if you're being fair about what, what he actually showed through two games, it's probably closer to the other way, yeah. which is you, you, maybe you're a little more confirmation that he, he isn't the guy as opposed to getting closer to confirmation that he can be the guy. It's still way too early. It's still way too early. I think he's still got a shot, but as I sit here right now, I – no, I, I can't say he's your next franchise quarterback. Despite how some of y'all want, which some of y'all want to believe, it's just I don't. This, the, the franchise is not there yet. And look, injuries are obviously a big part of it. But at the same time, the only way he gets his opportunities because of injuries. I mean, he yeah. got he got his opportunity because Derek Carr went down. He is the they chose him over Jacob Hayner to step up. And again, he's done some good things. And if he can finish it off on a high note, we can come here. We can have this debate uh, because I'm sure we'll have questions about it. Um, next week or whatever the case may be. We can have a little more realistic picture of what the future outlook is for Spencer Rattler. Um, But if not, um, and it's a little more average, then I I think we'll probably have a little more feeling of, okay, well, we got, we still need some more, some more data to suggest what he can or cannot be. Or the worst case scenario, we we're convinced that he's not going to be the guy, which can certainly happen as well. And that's what fifth round quarterbacks, most of them, Develop when they do develop, develop into high end backups that can come in and keep your team afloat. And to me, a high end backup is one that when your starter is out for a finite period of time, can you keep the team afloat? 
I mean, it's, it's always the 500 check for me. Can yeah. you come if you if you're in for four games? Can you get your team to two and two? If it's, I guess in this case it'll be three. Can you at least get one win? Yeah. Can you at least give your team and they one need win? Him to get one win. I think that's a fair and reasonable expectation for Spencer Rattler. Absolutely. And when you really look at it and when you really think about it, you know, if the Saints, we're talking about the Saints playoff chances not being dead. Mm -hmm. But let's say they go the other way. Let's say if this season turns out in a way that, you know, the organization doesn't (laughs) want, the team doesn't want. Let's say they finish five and 12. Let's say they have the eighth or ninth pick in the draft and you start looking at quarterbacks. And how many Saints fans or even people in the organization are going to look and say, well, we've got Quinn Ewers here. We've got Shador Sanders mm-hmm. here. We've got Cam Ward, Jalen Milrow. Uh, I'm not a fan of him, but Carson Beck. Mm-hmm. Or I'm going to keep it local because they have a guy at LSU who is flying up mm-hmm. draft boards. And I have seen getting picked in the first round of several mocks. Yeah, Do you look at Spencer Rattler and say, well, he's a better option than Garrett Nussmeyer? 100%. Keeping him in New Orleans. I don't think you do that as a fan. I don't think the Saints do that as an organization because Spencer Rattler has not given them enough confidence to make that decision. And look, if you get to that point, you're five and twelve. It's probably another, probably another coaching staff making that call anyway. So, sure. uh, <laughs> um, especially if it got to that bad, I, I, I still think they want to see Da succeed. And I don't, and I think he's gonna get the the benefit of a, of the doubt. And if it's close, but five and twelve wouldn't be close or whatever, whatever in that hypothetical scenario you're talking about. Do we have another one we can squeeze in? I've got about uh, we we got about thirty this seconds. One's a quick real yes quick. or no question. Is it time to tank or can the Saints actually make the playoffs from Darvell and Slidell? It is not time to tank. I think if they can get a run, these first five these next five games, they can have they have a shot to turn it around. I agree. The five games will decide it. I say they gotta go four and one. If you go two and three or even one and four over that stretch, yeah, it's time to tank and start watching some college games and looking at quarterbacks. And then it's time to start looking at the full <laughs> The full spectrum of what you got at quarterbacks. All right. So, yeah, we're going to wind it down here. The last 20 seconds or so. Uh, 20 seconds or so. I can't talk today. 20 <laughs> seconds or so. But anyway, uh, that's Andre Johnson Jr. I am Sean Vazan. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll catch you guys next time on Overtime.